you know, you know, this, this is just, you know, you see things like this on the internet and you're like, well, clearly this isn't that big of a deal, but people and not even verified, but you know what? People write it anyways. So this article actually comes from the Young Conservatives. Not so fast, Hillary. Turns out her bump in polls may be flat out cooked as part of media's agenda against Trump. Um, okay, so some problems here. One, uh, media's agenda against Trump. Why wouldn't the media be against Trump? What? What is Trump? Of course the media is against Trump. Trump's own party is against Trump. There's a, there's a bet on a site where you can speculate about like political outcomes and things like that. And one of the, the bets is that Trump will be kicked out of the race before the end of the month. I bet against that. I don't think that they're going to do it. So I think that they're going to sure as hell fucking try. Ah, okay, second, a bump in the polls being cooked. That's not particularly outlandish. The polls, you know, may be adjusted a little bit to make it look like Hillary's ahead. But, but, before we get into that, let's take a little look at the article. So yeah, this is Young Conservatives is the uh, group who posted this article. So clearly there's not going to be any sort of media bias here. None at all. Let's take a look. Let's see. Uh, media's been desperately trying to convince us that Hillary received a huge bump from her convention, uh, but everyone who actually watched it is having a hard time believing that. Now, you see, what I have a problem with here is I don't understand why they would have a hard time believing that. The Democratic National Convention had lots of good, strong speeches. I mean, there was, I, I, Michelle Obama was absolutely phenomenal. Hillary's speech was pretty good as well. I mean, um, uh, uh, I mean, there, there was a lot of good stuff in there, and you know, it was very. While there was a lot of scandal that happened. The speeches and the topics of the convention itself were pretty on point. Let's see, uh, must have been the most boring four days of television ever put together in human history. Wow, that, that is quite the stretch. If you honestly believe that, well, then, one, you didn't see either of the convention footage from, like, 2004, which... Let me tell you, was not exciting to go through, like, at all. I looked at a little bit of it and had to stop, like, after just two or three speeches because it, oh, they were just so boring. And I watched uh, more speeches from the DNC and the RNC this year, and actually neither side was particularly boring. Why are you refreshing page? Whatever. So, okay. When you start really digging into these quote-unquote polls, there are some major inconsistencies. Like your inconsistency with the use poll. Do you know what the word poll means? It means to ask somebody, some, a, a group of people, something like that, and then get their responses. In fact, Reuters basically caught, got caught cooking the numbers on one of their Polls. So, the thing is, there's more than one poll. So what they're saying here is that Reuters may have naturally favored Clinton, but I don't think that Clinton put them up to it. I honestly don't. I think that that's... That's not the kind of campaigning that a politician would do. Not because I think that they're not crooked people, but tweaking... Okay, but 
changing poll results from a single poll, even though there are a lot of polls that are used to measure, uh, to measure how candidates are doing with the population, it, it's... Uh, okay, so Pat Cadell, political strategist, responded. Uh, in near disbelief, what he calls a cooked daily tracking poll. Uh, they changed their formula. They went back and changed the results for... Uh, they also... All the former polling off the site. They didn't tweak the procedure. They cooked it. Uh, they made a switch as much as nine points in the results from the beginning last week. It's not, to be on doubt, the most outrageous thing. Never in my life have I seen a news organization and supposedly reputable poll do something so dishonest. Now, the thing is, is that that's not Hillary Clinton's fault. You know what? I don't... If their goal is to get Hillary elected president, while this may have been a mistake in terms of um, damaging their reputation and potentially damaging Hillary Clinton's reputation a little bit, this was not Hillary Clinton's fault. She did not do this. There is no, there's no evidence, no even suggestion. Sorry, what this article suggests is that she's involved. What this article is, <laughs> but this article, of course, because there's no evidence and there's no, there is no direct accusation that Hillary Clinton did this. But what they're saying is that people did this for Hillary Clinton because they don't want Trump to win, which would be exactly fucking right. And then some from uh, Breitbart. This is what the media is willing to do to try to elect her, Kenel said. This poll is nothing but part of a media offensive. In the 45 years since I was a child in top-level presidential campaigns, I have never seen the media on such a jihad. A very particular word he used. Because it's associated with Muslims. This jihad means holy war, and clearly that was the right word to use there. <clears throat> and so involved hiding facts and not following up. This is a crisis of democracy, what the press is now doing. Okay, another thing about tracking polls is that the day that you get the results, they're not very accurate. What happens is, as time passes, each day, the results from the previous days get more accurate. They filter the data through more and they can get a better idea of where each candidate stands. So a daily tracking poll, you can notice that uh, whenever they show the tracking polls, that there's normally a pretty big margin of error. Sometimes up to five or six percent up or down on either either candidate. So a nine point, you know, when, when they're solidifying the numbers from several days ago, and they're like, okay, okay, so the numbers are in from that poll. Okay, well now we have the full set of numbers for that. We can finish adjusting the poll and figure out exactly where everyone went. I mean, nine points is a lot. Is that necessarily cooked, though? I don't, I, I, I don't know. You know, if they launch an investigation into it, which I don't think that they will because this really, this isn't a crime and it's, I mean, it may be a sign of media bias, but is this, is this not media bias right here? Uh, okay. He noted that Hillary Clinton made big news on Fox News Sunday when she claimed the FBI found her responses to questions about her secret email server to be honest and consistent when in fact the FBI director James uh, Comey said the opposite when he declined to refer charges against her to prosecutors. Okay, now, I didn't necessarily want Hillary to become the Democratic candidate. I was a Bernie uh, Sanders supporter myself. Personally, I was hoping that she would get at least indicted and then would have to drop out of the race and Bernie Sanders would be the candidate for the Democrats. But you know what? Now that she's in the position of nominee, I mean, I'm behind her. She's If you look at her track record, I mean, she's so she's a good politician. She's got a ton of experience. She's got a couple of scandals on her, but that's like and yes, okay, the email scandal is pretty big. 
and the fact that they had so much against her and decided not to file charges actually does make sense. One, you would not want to be the prosecutor taking that case. That would just, you would never, you, you'd be done. You'd be done. Unless you were a conservative prosecutor and you only took conservative legal, oh, it, was, it would just be a, a nightmare. A nightmare. But the, the important thing is, is that uh, ah, anyways, so uh, that is language from another planet Cadell declared this woman to make the, that assertion after all the proven lies should be a big story, but it will not be. Okay, so what, yeah, what I was about to say was that what she did, a lot of people have compared to Snowden, which is absolutely false, absolutely false. So the difference between Hillary Clinton and Snowden, even though I also don't think that Snowden should have been brought up on charges necessarily, is that Snowden intentionally leaked documents because he was, was, he, his goal was to draw attention to the documents and shed new light on the ethical practices which uh, our government takes and the and transparency and things. What Hillary did was technical negligence. She probably had been briefed about how important it was to do these things, the, to take the proper precautions with passwords and not to host the file, anything that ha could have classified information on it on a private email server that uh, all doc it's like all of her documents for her work uh, everything basically that national security has to go through uh, NSA servers just to you know make sure that everything's at least safer and she was like ah, yeah but it's more convenient for me to put everything in one place so in in one sense you kind of you you kind of understand you're like okay you're an old lady and you didn't really know what you, what you were doing in that regard now this is a terrible mistake to have to make in for a person who is so high up on in the chain of command but a mistake like that now means a mistake like that won't happen later because that happened now that's not going to happen when she's president, when it, actu when it really matters, when there are, are constantly classified documents going through her email. Okay, so... Uh, do -do -do. He also noted uh, the contrast between how Donald Trump's appearance on ABC News over the weekend was immediately followed by a round table of commentators attacking him, but Fox News staged no such ambush of Clinton. You know why? Because Clinton is so much harder to tear apart. She's, yeah, she's made some mistakes, but like every sentence that comes out of Trump's mouth is something that you can get a, that you can analyze and try to figure out what the fuck he means. So it's like, of course, of course they went with Trump. Why wouldn't they go with Trump? Because everyone wants to talk about Trump. And because he's an idiot. He's an idiot. And I just, I don't understand. I mean, okay, I kind of get it. I get that people like that he's racist and misogynist. And they, they, they're like, yeah, he says what we're all thinking. But are too afraid to say because we live in a politically correct society where our society now enforces kind of rules about you know being cordial to other people and not calling people things like faggots or niggers or anything like that because those words are really offensive and are really hurtful to people and so as a society we kind of decided yeah those aren't we can't say those anymore we can't call people shit like that anymore it's it's just indecent. Now, I mean, that's the kind of society that we're becoming, which, in my opinion, is entirely fine. I, I mean, I'm a liberal, so 
you know, I'm all a hippie and stuff like that. But, you know, I, I think that... I, ah, I think that it's a good thing. Anyways, Cattell furthermore dismissed Trump's ABC News interviewer, George uh, Stephanopoulos. Stephanopoulos. The former Democratic operative, a Clinton contributor, and an absolute fraud as a news person. That is a hefty claim. I actually... I don't think I think I might have seen a few interviews by him, but I I, I can't really judge such a statement, uh, except that it's a pretty extreme statement. Uh, it goes on. It's unbelievable what he did. He interviewed Trump and then basically attacked the con. And then basically had the Khan family, the the Muslim mother and father of the soldier who was killed, and General Allen on to attack Trump after the interview. He showed them the interview and then let attack him grammar and then loaded a panel with people who are so negative Cadell complained don't believe everything you hear from mainstream media actually don't believe anything well young conservatives i think i think that you guys um may need to do a little bit more research and I mean, your your guys' media bias is uh, <laughs> you're you're totally there's there's you're so confused, and and you're it's like you're almost lucid. You almost see the hypocrisy in it. You almost get it, but then you're like, no, but we're good. We're good. We're good. It's it's all. Everything, everybody's lambasting Trump, and nobody cares about all the shit that Hillary's doing. When that is not the case at all, because Hillary's only done a couple of things. But when you have Trump, who has been sued over 2,000 times, or been charged with, you know, criminal offenses, has been found, has been tried over 2,000 times, and has been settled, has settled or found guilty in over 500 cases in like 36 years, I mean, that's, that's a lot of time, that's a lot of time, but that's a fuck ton of litigation to go through, and I understand, some of it, some of it was business stuff, some of it, yeah, yeah, you know what, yeah, so we got sued over, you know, not paying people that he worked for, that worked for him and stuff like that. You know what? Yeah, okay, that's that's a pretty shitty thing to do, and I wouldn't want a president who did that. But you know what? That's it, He's a businessman. It, it's going to happen to any business. What bothers me, though, are the uh, sexual assaults and things like that that are on his record, which... Oh, man. <sighs> ah. Anyways, getting off topic... Man, <laughs> to quote a line from the article itself, seriously, this is one of the more ridiculous stories of media bias you will ever see. And I think that that statement applies more to the article that it's in than what it's actually talking about. <sighs> Anyways, if you like the video, uh, like, comment, subscribe. Uh, I should be putting out videos most days i'm thinking three to four a week depending on you know what i can fit in and not uh so yeah uh, and slash rant